Okay, so yeah, here's the thing. Hair washing. It's like, you think you already know everything about it, right? You may know everything about it, but I feel like you don't. I just feel like there's a lot more you could know about it. I know what you're thinking. Since when is hair washing interesting? I mean, it's the last thing I really think about. It's like I do it and I get out of the shower and I think like, oh my God, that's it. That was so easy. I washed my hair and I'm never gonna think about it again. But no, I'm here to tell you, you should think about it more. So I'm gonna take the opportunity today to just go over some things with you, enlighten you, expand your horizons when it comes to washing your hair. Let's just dive right into it. Let's do it. Welcome to class, boys and girls. This is Hair Washing 101 on the whiteboard. Can get that written out. Hey, it's oh, beautiful. So, listen. This video concept came up to me when I was telling people how to use my shampoo and conditioner, Project X. I used it on my Instagram story. I showed you guys what you should be doing, how you should be washing your hair, and a lot of people had a lot, a lot of questions about this. Listen, I've had all the questions ever when doing clients' hair. That's the one thing you don't really talk about because you think everybody already knows about it, but it's actually not true. So, let's get into it. Water temperature. What do you think is the best option to wash your hair with? Cold, hot, extremely hot, lukewarm. Take your pick. What do you think is the best? I'm gonna give you the answer right now, okay? Warm is the correct answer. Congratulations if you got that right. Warm. You should be washing your hair with warm water, okay? A lot of people want to know, hey, should I be washing my hair with cold water? I heard it makes your hair shinier. I heard it makes your hair healthier. I, I, I'm gonna come out and say it. I think washing your hair with cold water is such a I wouldn't do it. Unless you wanna just make yourself miserable in the morning or at night or whenever you end up washing your hair. Stop washing your hair with cold water. You need the warm water in order to open up your hair cuticle, okay? Warm water will end up opening your cuticle a bit wider than cold water will and it'll release the dirt easier. You can honestly put your hair under the warm water and it will cleanse your hair. Next, let's talk about how harsh or how gentle you should be washing your hair. You can take your guess. You should be washing your hair gently, not gently, gently, er, Gentlest, take your pick. What do you think the answer is? If you chose gently, you'd be correct. A lot of people tangle up their hair when washing their hair. A lot of people like to go really in scrub. I know it feels good, but what you're doing is tangling and matting your hair more than it needs to be tangled and matted. You don't need to do that because what you're gonna do is end up roughing up the cuticle way too much. When you rough up the cuticle, you could be losing hair that you don't need to be losing at that time. Listen, just go in side to side motions, not round motions because this will tangle your hair. Side to side is best and a little bit gentler than maybe you're wanting to go, okay? You don't need to go like extremely gentle. You don't need to be like touching a baby's head. You can go in there. Just don't be like, I see a lot of girls, okay? Going in with their fingernails. Listen, again, I know it feels great, but you're gonna ruin your hair. Just chill, okay? Gently, gently rub your head side to side with the shampoo. Now, let's get into suds, okay? Do you need them? Are they necessary? What do suds do? They're the thing that washes your hair. They don't do anything. They wash your hair better than when you don't have suds. If you chose they don't do anything, you'd be correct. Suds don't do anything. They're just a visual cue that you're washing your hair. You don't need suds for any reason. Now, what suds pretty much do is just make you think you're washing your hair better than you're actually washing it. Kind of cool, kind of not cool. But I know a lot of people out there are convinced that if your shampoo does not suds extremely crazy amounts of foam, your hair is not being shampooed properly. It's just not true. I've heard a few people say it about my shampoo, Project X. It doesn't suds a lot. However, a lot of companies put a lot of surfactants in their shampoos in order to make you think that their shampoo is working better than other shampoos. Now, when creating my own shampoo, I did put surfactants in there because even me, I even though I know this information, sometimes I'm still like, hmm, I'm not really convinced my hair is shampooed properly without having suds. So we did put a surfactant in my shampoo. However, we did not put a overbearing amount because I don't think it's necessary. And to be honest, it's doing nothing for your hair. It's just a visual cue that you are shampooing your hair and you are cleaning it. However, even if there wasn't any surfactants in there, no suds, it would still be doing the same thing. So you actually can use shampoo that have absolutely no surfactants in them and they are still doing the job of cleaning your hair. Interesting, right? Suds are not going to harm your hair, except they may harm your thoughts about a certain shampoo conditioner. They may make you think one is working better than the other when in actuality, the thing that's not sudsing is, is probably doing more good to your hair than the one that is sudsing incredible amounts of suds. So yeah, now. Nah. 
Let's go over one more thing about the scalp. When you wash your hair, which parts of your hair should you be washing? The scalp only, the scalp and ends, the ends only. Choose one. If you chose scalp only, you'd be correct. Your ends, yes, they get oily, but the oil comes from your scalp. The scalp is the part that produces the oil. Your ends do not produce oil. That might be surprising to some of you. That might be kind of not at all surprising to a lot of you. And I understand that. But here's the thing. When you shampoo your scalp with a nice amount of shampoo that we'll go over in a second, you shampoo, you rub back and forth like we talked about, gently. Now, after you do that, you don't then work down the ends of your hair. Don't, please, don't take the ends of your hair and go like this, please. You're going to ruin your cuticle. It's not gonna be good for you. It's a bad idea. Please don't do that. Once you go under the warm water and you rinse your scalp free of shampoo, your ends will then be shampooed by the residue from the scalp. So everything comes from your scalp down, releasing the trap dirt within your ends. There's no need to rub your ends. There's no need to get onto your ends with shampoo. Your scalp will be fine. And also all you're gonna do is dry your ends and detangle them a lot more than necessary. There's no point of shampooing your ends. Your ends will get clean by just shampooing your scalp. Now, if you're wondering how much shampoo you should be using, well, that's a great question. We're about to go over that right now. Basically, most people can use the same amount of shampoo. We all have pretty much the same head space, unless you have just an abnormally big head or an abnormally small head. I don't know, I'm not judging you. Do your thing. However, most of us have the same size head, similar sizes, I'd say. How much shampoo should you be using? Well, we have a few different categories here. A dime size amount, two dime size amounts, three dime size amounts. If you picked two dime size amounts, you'd be correct. I like to use one dime size amount for the front of the head and one dime size amount for the back of the head. Okay, you can put a little bit in at a time, lather it up even though the sides don't matter, <laughs> and then work the front of your hair do, 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 all the way back to here, put a little bit more in, move around your hands and get the back, okay? Make sure you don't wipe the shampoo away with the ends of your hair when you go to put it on your scalp, okay? If you have very long hair, move it around your shoulder, go in from the back, go in from the back and go in there, okay? Focus on parts that get the most oily, maybe like right here. For me at least, that's where I feel like I have the most oil secretion and that is where I start. So I like to put one hand maybe right here and one hand right here and kind of just like, go in there. But a lot of people tell me they have long hair. They need a lot of shampoo. They buy the gallons of shampoo. It's not enough for them. Girl, you do not have to be using that much shampoo. That's crazy. 99% of people can use the exact same amount of shampoo. I can use the same amount of shampoo as a girl with 24 inch long hair, I promise. I've heard people who wash their hair once a year. I've heard people who wash their hair every day. How often should I be washing my hair? Again, I'm very happy you asked that question. Should you wash your hair? once a week, every day, once a month, once a year. Pick your answer. What do you think the right answer is? If you chose any of these answers, you'd be correct. You know why? Because everybody is different. This is a wonderful, diverse world we live in and so is your shampooing routines. Now, I'm not exactly gonna say washing your hair every day is the greatest thing. However, I know that there are people out there who have extremely oily hair. And that is usually because they have a dependency on shampoo, okay? You've grown up washing your hair every single day. Your parents told you that's what you're supposed to do. You've been using very harsh chemicals, possibly some not so good drugstore shampoos, and your hair's gotten very dried out. Therefore, it's overproducing oils to your scalp. There are ways to fix this, okay? I typically like to wash my hair once a week. And when my hair gets oily, I use a natural bristle brush from the scalp to the ends and I brush it through. You can also use dry shampoo to help combat the oils in your hair. So if you've been washing your hair every day for your whole life, I would probably stop that. And let me say one more thing before you come after me right now. My shampoo is called Project X Everyday Shampoo. Everyday shampoo. Let's get one thing straight, okay? Everyday shampoo does not mean every day. I know that's a little misleading. However, when somebody refers to an everyday shampoo, it's typically a word used for a shampoo that is gentle enough for everyday use for those of you who are committed to washing your hair every day. You can definitely use my shampoo every single day. However, it really refers to a shampoo and conditioner that is gentle, that is not gonna be extremely heavy. It's a shampoo that is formulated for all hair types and textures. It's gonna be good for everyday use if you are committed to that and good for people who wash their hair not so often. So let's go over that though. 
I would discontinue washing your hair every day if possible. There are a lot of YouTube videos about how to train your hair, how to stop washing it so much, how to make your hair stop producing so many oils. So I definitely recommend going to YouTube and searching that if you're interested to learn more about that. However, today we're not going over that. So go watch somebody else's video. But for me, somebody who has processed, lightened hair, I like to wash once a week. It gives me the perfect amount of time to have a little bit of oil secretion for my scalp, to hydrate my ends, and not dry out my hair too much. So once a week seems to be pretty good for most people, or twice a week seems to be pretty good for most people also. Let's talk about how long you should be leaving your conditioner on for. 30 seconds, three minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes plus. This will vary per person. Now, listen, if you want extra hydration, I would definitely leave it on as long as you possibly can in the shower. I don't think you need to exceed 15 minutes. I think yes for a hair mask, but for just plain old conditioner, I would probably go personally with about three minutes. I like to get in the shower right away, shampoo my hair, right away after that, put conditioner on and just leave it on until I'm done with the shower. That may be whatever, three, 10 minutes, whatever I end up doing that day. But I'd say just leave it on but you don't need to exceed 15 minutes if you don't feel like it. I really just don't believe it's gonna do anything else for your hair unless you're using a hair mask that is made to be left on for that long of time. I like to always follow up my personal conditioning routine with a hair mask because I know that I need more love than just a regular conditioner. Now the conditioner is gonna do the job of detangling, getting it kind of prepared for the hair mask, but I like to really double up on conditioner and I know the hair mask will give me that much needed lift of all the essentials I need in order to really, really hydrate my hair bring it back to life. And also, I have a couple things to go over after the shampoo and conditioning process. Here's a big one for me. Here's a pet peeve of mine. When you get out of the shower, do not take that towel and scrub your head with it. Don't you dare do that to me. Don't go like this. Don't put your head down and go like this to your ends. Oh my God, there's nothing I wanna see less than that. Calm down, Brittany. I would recommend is scrunch the hair in the towel. You kind of lay the towel over your hands and scrunch the bottom, scrunch the top, whatever, whatever. I also wouldn't put your hair in a turban. I know it's 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 tempting, but you're gonna end up getting some tension alopecia if you're putting your hair up in a turban all the time after washing it, because it's gonna really pull on those very fragile front pieces of your hair that have just been washed, that have just been warmed up. When your hair is warmed up, it is in a much more fragile and expandable state than when it is cold. So I would not recommend putting your hair up in a turban. I know it's easy. I know it's like, mm, I should do that, but like, no, you shouldn't, girl. You just shouldn't do it. Now that your hair has been washed perfectly and it's looking fabulous and it's been conditioned to perfection, one of the most important parts for me is after the shampooing process. Listen, following up with a great hair care routine is essential. Okay, because what you're doing when you shampoo is getting the dirt out of your hair and detangling and adding a bit more health to your hair with whichever product you may be using. But at the end of the day, shampoo and conditioner is only touching your hair for a matter of minutes. There are definitely benefits to that, but there's not as many as there's gonna be when using aftercare products after your shampoo and conditioning process. So this is where it's gonna vary a lot per person. You have dry hair, you wanna use some leave-ins, you wanna use some oils, you have curly hair, you wanna use some curl products, obviously curl defining products, you wanna use maybe some oil also, maybe some heat protectant spray if you're gonna try and blow dry it out and straighten it. Whatever your hair type or texture is, there are definite necessary products you should be using in order to keep your hair the healthiest possible and always follow up your shampoo and conditioning routine with the proper product or else you're just gonna let your hair down and you don't wanna do that. Your, your hair has done so much for you, so much for your confidence and so much for your personality. Give it a little love, okay? Show it how you love it back. Let's get into the type of shampoo and conditioner you should be using. A lot of people wonder why I don't always recommend drugstore cheap shampoo. I am by no means saying that drugstore shampoo and conditioner is bad, but there are definitely bad ones out there. <laughs> Listen, if the shampoo has been marked down significantly, if you are paying a very low price for your shampoo, there is a very high chance there is not high quality ingredients in that shampoo and conditioner. Guys, my father always told me, you don't get nothing for nothing. And I have brought that with me through everything in my life. The more you pay, to a point, gets you more benefits. Listen, don't go out there and spend $10 on a shampoo. You're just gonna get probably a soap bar in a liquid form, which is not gonna be good for your hair. It's gonna strip you of all your natural essential oils. It's gonna leave your hair so damaged without replacing the essentials that your hair needs to grow healthy. 
So, spending a premium price on shampoo and conditioner is always worth it in my opinion. And I know that's like hard to take from me because like I have shampoo and conditioner. I'm not gonna be like, oh my God, go buy the $5 shampoo and conditioner. But I genuinely would say that to anybody, no matter what, because a lot of people's setbacks to buying expensive shampoo and conditioner is that they use so much of it. And before this, we went over how much to use. So you really shouldn't be using very much of it. It should last you quite a while. And if that's the only concern you have with the price, then that's your answer. You shouldn't be using as much and it will last you longer and you will not pay any more than what you're currently paying for your current shampoo and conditioner. Now, I can speak on my behalf. My shampoo and conditioner costs $25. And some of you guys were shook about that. It's a very normal price for shampoo and conditioner that is eight ounces that should last you a while. Now, I don't want to say how long because again, some people aren't going to listen to my directions and use two dime size amounts, but it should last you quite a few months if you are not washing your hair every single day and you are using two dime size amounts. So that is that. I just want to say there are reasons for shampoo being so cheap in drugstores. Some of them, there are reasons like they use literally whatever ingredients they can find, whatever the cheapest ingredients there are at that time and put into a, a large quantity of shampoos and conditioners and sell it for a low price because they are making these shampoos and conditioners for a very low price. Okay. Brands are always marking up their prices to their consumers and that's because that's how they make money. And typically retailers, people selling goods are marking up their product by 50%. And that is because it covers the all kinds of costs, okay? Not only do retailers have the cost of making the shampoo and conditioner, they have employees to support, they have employees to pay, they have manufacturers to pay, they have all sorts of payments that need to go through. So you're not usually looking at companies that have less of a 50% profit margin. Um, so when a shampoo costs $6, $10, you have to think, how much do they make that shampoo for? That is very cheap to make. And there are reasons for that because the ingredients are extremely cheap. Just think about that one. Hopefully that makes sense. That is why I believe you should always be spending more on shampoo and conditioner. You don't need to necessarily be rich to spend $25 on shampoo and conditioner. You may just need to spend your money more wisely and think about all the things you spent a lot of money on and does not last you half that time or a quarter of that time. Well, now that I'm all talked out for the day, I hope you enjoyed that little presentation I had for you. I don't know why I love talking about that topic so much. It's like kind of fun for me. If you have any more questions, leave them below. I will try to get back to some of you guys in the comment section. So leave your comments if you'd like. Anything I didn't touch on that you're still wondering. Um, and of course, I gotta self promote. If you guys would like to check out my new shampoo and conditioner called Project X, it'll be linked below at xmondohair.com. And you guys can read up about it, see the ingredient list, see whatever else information you need to know. I hope you found that informative. Maybe learn some new things about something that's very common and you think you may have known everything about. You may not have known everything about it. That's it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at BrimonNYC. Follow my hair care brand, X Mono Hair, to stay up to date with new product launches. And that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Don't forget to live your extra life. And I will see you all next time. Peace.